I picked the Goosebumps series because essentially um, I could borrow it from my nephews. And they themselves, both uh, their 10 and 13, say that the Goosebumps series is what got them interested in reading real books. I myself write fantasy fiction and vampire fiction, so R.L. Stein appealed to me immediately. Um, this book, this book in the Goosebumps series is called The Barking Ghost and is one of those that was explicitly banned in Florida for satanic symbolism, possession, and descriptions of dogs as menacing and attacking. Um, I looked for the satanic symbolism in hopes of reading you some. I'm not that up on my satanic symbolism, um, so it may have passed me by. I cannot say whether there is any or not. Um, but there's definitely bad dogs in here, and my response to that is, so what? I'm going to read you a little sort of synopsis, sound of the Reader's Digest version. Um, and there is also possession. There are possessed bad dogs, which I might try in my next novel, because it seems to work here. For the zillionth time that night, I threw the covers off my legs and bolted up from the bed. I definitely heard something that time. And it wasn't the wind, either. I'm always hearing things, but no matter what I hear, Mom says, it's just the wind, Cooper, just the wind. But the wind doesn't sound like heavy footsteps crunching through the leaves, and that's what I heard this time, definitely. I stood next to my bedroom window, then I leaned over and peered out. It sure was spooky out there. I squinted to see better in the dark. Don't lean over too far, I thought. Don't let whoever or whatever is out there see you. My eyes searched the backyard. I lifted my head and spotted them. A few feet away, huge black gnarly arms reaching out toward the window, ready to grab me. No, it was only the branches of the old oak tree. Well, give me a break. I said it was dark. My eyes swept over the yard again. The sound, there it was. I ducked. My legs trembled as I crouched beneath the window. I broke out into a cold sweat. Crunch crunch, even louder than before. I swallowed hard, took another peep. Something moved in the shadows under the oak tree. I held my breath. Crunch, crunch. A gust of wind blew the tree branches furiously. The frightening sounds grew louder, closer, closer to the house. As I peered out, two eyes suddenly flashed in the dark. My throat went dry. I couldn't cry out. The eyes flashed again. They were even closer to the house this time, right outside my window, staring at me, moving toward me. The creature's dark shape began to take form. It was a, a bunny rabbit. I let out a long sigh. The first night in my new house, I was already shaking in terror. And then the plot thickens. When uh, Cooper actually gets up the courage to go outside and look for these frightening noises, he watched the spot, he, I watched the spooky shadows moving along my walls and ceilings and listening to the frightening noises of my new house. Noises I would have to hear for the rest of my life. The pipes rattling, the dogs barking. Wait a minute. Dogs? I sat up. We don't have a dog. And there isn't another house around here for miles. But I definitely heard a barking dog. I listened closely. The dog barked again, then started to howl. I sighed and pulled off the covers again, started to climb out of the bed. Then it hit me. Mickey. This had to be one of my brother's stupid tricks. He was an excellent dog barker. He practiced all the time. Smiling, I settled back in my pillow. I wouldn't get up. I wouldn't go to the window. He wasn't going to get me this time. No way. I, I lay there listening to Mickey make a fool of himself, howling and barking like a big old dog. What a jerk. 
Then suddenly I sat up again. Whoa, I heard two dogs howling. Even Mickey couldn't pull that off. The howling turned to piercing cries so close right under my window. As I said, I made it through a whole day without being scared, but boy, was I making up for it tonight. For the zillionth and third time, I slowly crept to the window. I could hear them clearly, two dogs wailing and howling. For the zillionth and third time, I gazed out the window. But for the first time, I couldn't believe what I saw. And ultimately, Cooper survives the howling dogs with the help of an intrepid young woman who's very smart. And uh, there is possession. And I think the two of them end up not being eaten by the dogs, but turning into squirrels. Thank you.